Hello and welcome to Richmond again this week. My apologies if my voice is a little croaky. I have had a nasty cold this week, but thankfully it's on its way out now. Just going to head straight into our reflection this morning so that I'm not talking for too long. I'm using the gospel reading set for this Sunday. Well, it's verses um, 35 to 45 of Mark chapter 10 that's set for this Sunday, but I'm going to read from verse 32 to 45 instead. And as usual, I am reading from the new revised standard version, the NRSV, but please use whatever version you have to hand. So Mark chapter 10, verses 32 to 45. The heading for the first section says, A third time Jesus foretells his death and resurrection. They were on the road going up to Jerusalem and Jesus was walking ahead of them. They were amazed and those who followed were afraid. He took the twelve aside again and began to tell them what was to happen to him, saying, See, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death. Then they will hand him over to the Gentiles. They will mock him and spit upon him and flog him and kill him, and after three days, he will rise again. And then a section headed, The Request of James and John. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink, or be baptised with the baptism that I am baptised with? They replied, We are able. Then Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink you will drink, and with the baptism with which I am baptised, you will be baptised. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, you know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognise as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. Whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. Amen, and thanks be to God for that reading from Holy Scripture. I'm basing this reflection today on the book written by, with others, Ched Myers that I mentioned last week in my reflection. The book's called Say to This Mountain. The disciples are on this journey, on the way, as it's translated in many other translations. And we are now told that this journey, this way they are on, is leading to Jerusalem. Of course, we all know what's going to happen there. But the disciples are still ignorant of the full horror that is about to unfold before them. Jesus walks ahead. He literally leads the way. 
but he takes them aside and tries to impute to them what is about to happen. Well, we know it's true, but it seems the disciples just don't grasp it. Previously, we have heard Peter rebuke Jesus for this talk of prosecution and death. And now we hear James and John, the two others of, if you like, the inner circle, clearly missing the point. The preceding chapters have been full of Jesus's reiteration that the last will be first and the first last. That to be true disciples of Jesus means being with the least, perhaps even being the least. We can almost feel Jesus's exacerbation. He answers their question with a question. Can you drink the cup that I drink and share my baptism? Not fully understanding, perhaps they declare, in my words, yes, we can. But this is not an episode of Bob the Builder, one of my children's favourites when they were growing up. Can you fix it, Bob? Yes, we can. This is not a simple let's join together and all will be wonderful. Saying yes we can to Jesus has implications. It's not an oh yes of course, no problem. In fact, saying yes we can will be loaded with problems. And to say yes we can in the same breath as asking to be promoted to sit at the left and right hand of Christ in the heavenly realm clearly misses the point. And so Jesus, perhaps wearily by this time, has to explain again. How fortunate are we that no matter how consistently we too miss the point, that the church has missed the point, Jesus still loves us and takes the time to explain. Jesus explains that power is only gained through complete powerlessness. Jesus is our Lord through the cross. And that's not to say that if you suffer, if you have suffered, as all of us will or have to some degree, that this will ultimately be rewarded by some ultimate power or rulership. It cannot be that there is somehow going to be a desire to suffer in order to achieve promotion in heavenly terms. To wish to be superior is to wish to exert power and dominion over others. And this is not the way. This is not the way that Jesus leads us. That is the way, as Jesus tells us, of human rulers. Human greatness is so often defined by how influential people are, be it because of their fame or their wealth or whatever. As disciples, we are not to seek greatness in those terms. James and John, we are told, have no understanding of what it is they ask for. They seem not to understand what Jesus has asked of them as his disciples. And before we tut tut James and John, we had best perhaps look at our own lives and how we and the church as a whole have indeed sought to be powerful to have wealth. We must cast aside the notion that just because we believe we have the right to judge others or to tell others how to be more Christ-like. Jesus can do that for himself. 
we must cast aside the practice of superiority, of condemnation, or even tolerance without love and without understanding. The way that Jesus asks us to walk and leads us on contradicts all our human notions of social and economic security, particularly in our Western cultures, in our consumerist society. It is a way that has, in reality, not been fully embraced, as it perhaps should have been by us and the Church throughout the ages. But there are examples we can follow, not of perfect people, for there is a danger that we put a whole person on a pedestal and forget that human beings are all flawed. But there are examples of characteristics of faith in action that we can be inspired by and try to live like. I am sure we all know of people that we admire, not for their human success or wealth, but for their Christ-like qualities. What questions then do we ask ourselves today? What's going to help us to become more Christ-like ourselves? Perhaps the questions are along the lines of these. In my own walk, in your walk with Christ on this way, are we less interested in power now than when we began? Or are we willing to lose our life in the way Jesus meant it? To stop living for human values, but to truly live for values beyond and greater than ourselves. So that's absolutely not about being subservient or martyring ourselves to humans who exercise power over others. Perhaps we need to ask ourselves, are we open to the understanding that to lead also means to serve and to follow? Sometimes in the church especially, we expect our leaders to spend less time in service and in following the least than to be having all the answers and leading from the front. Do we feel that over time our eyes have been opened to new ways of being human? That we have become less interested in status, position, titles and more concerned with the needs of the poor, of the other? Perhaps we need to ask ourselves where I have privilege, where you have privilege. Do we truly cherish the discipleship gifts of those who do not share that privilege, whether that's on account of their age, their colour, their sexuality or their differing abilities. Indeed, we must ask ourselves if we have silenced others instead of listening and learning and encouraging. So many questions we can ask ourselves. We can ask them about us as individuals, about our relationships, how we live our lives at home, at work, at school, anywhere. But the more we challenge ourselves, the more we will continue to be transformed by Christ, to be more aware of the grace of God, to become the more perfect human beings that we are called to be and were created to be. It can be scary, but it's worth the challenge. Amen. And for now, until the next time, 
May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. The rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may you know yourself held in the palm of God's hand. Amen. <laughs>